Hello, I'm Brian, and uh, I was explaining to my neighbor his motorcycle was burning oil. I noticed when I was riding behind him that a bunch of oil was going out through the tailpipe in the form of blue smoke, shooting the blues as we call it. So this video is about what happens when your engine's burning oil. So I thought, I've got the artwork. I'm, we, I should have done this last night. We had his bike in here and we rebuilt the engine, the top end, the little uh, XR250. So basically, you're, you have an oil pump, it pumps oil through the engine so that the top end where the valves are, see the valves I drew there, aren't they great? Uh, so that they get lubrication because otherwise there would be a lot of friction and heat and damage. So you've got engine oil down here where your dipstick is. And it goes lower and lower and lower when you burn an oil. Well where is it going? You go, it's going out the tailpipe, but how does that happen? Think of this like a jar, like a closed jar. Um, you've got oil down here below the piston where your crankshaft is and it gets flung around up in here and you also have oil that makes a trip up here and then goes across to everything and then drains back down but for it to go through the exhaust it's not going in through the intake usually unless you've got a bad PCV system positive crankcase ventilation, that's a whole other video uh, in fact I'll just put a link to it here, i got a PCV video right here Click it. Alright, welcome back. So the two places that you usually see oil go out through the exhaust is it enters the combustion chamber. This is the spark plug and this is where the intake goes. So you'd have like a carburetor here, or fuel injector, whatever. So it goes into the engine and then out through this way. And the way that the engines work is pretend this is the piston right here is it goes down, it sucks in the air fuel mixture, uh, it's inducted, just like a syringe sucking up water to squirt somebody with. So you suck it in and then the valve closes and then it gets compressed into a compressed air fuel mixture Then the spark plug goes bang and it forces the piston down and you got all the smoke and then this valve opens on the exhaust and you got little camshafts here and here you know with a little lobe on it and when it rotates around it pushes the valve down. So anyway uh, what happens is you got oil up in here and there's these little seals that go on the top. They call them valve stem seals. So anyway, when they go bad, you'll have a little bit of oil leak down. And it's usually not when the bike's running that you get much of this. It's usually when it's parked. So if you get a bunch of oil dripping down while the engine's off, um, basically what happens is the oil collects here. You get a little puddle of oil. You start it up and then you get blue smoke at startup. So if you have blue smoke at startup, it's usually valve seals. If you have smoke when you're getting on the gas, whether it's a car, you know, a little right pedal, or if it's a motorcycle, a little right hand twist, then it's usually piston rings. And piston rings, let me grab a piston and I'll just show you real quick. So here's a piston. This one happens to be from a Toyota Sequoia. And you see it's got two rings here, uh, one, two, and then a third ring that's actually made out of uh, little coil kind of stuff and then a t couple of teeny rings. We'll pull them off. In fact, let me get one with a handle on it. Let's do the Subaru one. So the way you take piston ring, basically if you get uh, oil burning, let's just wrap that part up first. If you get oil burning when you're at high RPMs, oil's getting past the oil ring on this and into the combustion chamber and going out the exhaust. So you're having a leak basically inside the engine, an internal leak. So these two rings, these top two, are compression rings. They help uh, air pressure and uh, help get the piston going as it should. To take a ring on and off is super easy. Uh, you basically just spread it and get the top part off and then you just kind of twist it in a circle like that. So there's ring number one, compression ring. When you put them on you want to make sure that these openings are rotated at different angles because if you have that little gap right in a row with another gap then you'll have a compression leak. A brand new engine, everything's rock and roll so you think and uh, you'll have to get in there and do it again. So same thing, just get the top part off left hand turn there you go let's get to the oil ring this is where all the business is you see there's a little pin there where it's supposed to line up and so 
that one has to go just so and this one's smeared eh. let's see if we can do one of these Toyota ones sorry Subaru so you've got a really skinny little one like this this video is turning into how to do piston rings but usually that's what it is if you're burning oil so there's this little guy who's on the bottom let's get these off real quick and get them all mixed up huh not that it matters these are all junk now anyway can you tell <laughs> this is the one from that uh, hydro locked video that Toyota 4Runner alright so we're down to just a little coil one Boy, this one's tough to find. Same thing with these, you don't want these to split on the same. You want them to split on one side and then another side and another, like a Mercedes-Benz symbol. Okay, so there's another oil ring and then this one. This one's gonna be tough to chase down. When you're putting these on, this little middle part has to go on first. Or else the other ones won't go on. Oh, okay, there you go. So this is kind of a spacer that keeps the other two apart. So looks kind of like a gear. But this is the oil ring and it's got a little return port. You see there's holes drilled in there. I don't know how well you can see that but there's a hole here, a hole here. It's usually a bunch of them through there. But uh, see Toyota. But basically uh, the oil gets in these ones and it gets pushed back down into the rest of the piston. You can see where the little oil return holes are here and here. You can see kind of like a mark from it. I don't know if you can see it. looks like little vampire teeth. They got them front and back. So if, uh, if those plug up with crud, you see there's a bunch of crud from not getting your oil changed. I can go 7,000 miles. I can go 10,000. I can go 12,000 miles between oil changes. I save so much money. No, you don't. <laughs> you're going to plug up these teeny little holes and you're going to start burning oil. So that's no good. But these ones are interesting. They got a little wire that uh, keeps it all in check. You can see the wire right there. Kind of interesting. So if your car is burning oil, you just got to ask yourself, or have somebody follow you and uh, look at the tailpipe and ask yourself, does it only burn oil at startup or does it burn oil uh, when you get on the gas? If your answer is it's when you get on the gas, then you probably need new piston rings. If it only does it on startup, then you probably need new valve stem seals. So I put the, the main body of it on and then my splits there. And then you put the uh, other one on, you have a split on the other side. And just kind of put one end down like that. Just follow it around and it'll all get in there. If you try to put these uh, oil, oil uh, end rings on first, they won't go in. This has a bunch of dirt and crud and stuff, so it's not going to go in real easy, but you get the idea. So, voila. That is why your engine burns oil and it's how to tell where it's coming from. And as I said with a PVC, PCV positive crankcase ventilation system a little bit of the bang factor that, that happens here goes past the piston rings. When that happens this becomes pressurized and you get oil leaks and stuff. So what they do is they have a positive crankcase ventilation system that vents it around back to the intake. And so you have a clean air and then a valve you know that uh, it's got a little rattle ball in it that causes a positive airflow going through the intake so that it doesn't build up pressure here but the vapors and all that you don't want to go into the environment so you go and have them go in through the intake and they get burned first and then come out in the form of uh, you've got hydrocarbons that go in you've got hydrocarbons oxygen and nitrogen and all this mess goes into here and then you get a bang and then it comes out as H2O, CO2 and NOx or just nitrogen and oxygen you know there's a lot of nitrogen in the stuff that you breathe and it's just kind of inert to us oxygen that's the real oxidizing energy burning rusting uh, component and then just the uh, hydrogen and the carbon so yay fun video look at my hands 
I hope you enjoyed my video. Um, if you want to see more videos like this, click subscribe. I do new videos every weekend and a bunch of them between sometimes if I have time and if there's no pattern to ski on. So <laughs> this is one of those bonus ones that we'll throw up, but I'll probably wind up getting posted on the weekend. I just got an Apple computer. I got a Mac, so I'm going to start doing some videos on that too. And hopefully that saves some editing time, but uh, i got to get trained on it in the meantime. Again, thanks for watching my videos. If you like it, click like. And uh, if you have any questions, comments, leave them in the comments below. I learn a lot from your comments. I read your comments. So if you have something you want to teach me a lesson, that's great. I like to learn. Thanks.